Right now, the Badgers are back at Camp Randall for their first game as an official AP Top 10 ranked team. We're tracking your game day forecast. And don't throw away your shot to see one of the most popular musicals to ever hit the Madison stage. We're live with tips and tricks to secure your seats for your family. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning and thanks for starting your day with us here on News 3 Now. It's Saturday, September 28th. I'm Keely Arthur, joined by the lovely meteorologist Dana Fulton. Dana, thanks for waking up this morning. We of appreciate course, it. Of course, of course. A little coffee fuel needed, but, but yes. we're here. We're good to go. And uh, thankfully, of course, today a really big day. Camp Randall and Mother Nature is playing along. Even though right now it does look very, very cloudy outside, here's a live look with our Edgewater Sky Cam. Uh, we aren't expecting any rain to slide on through. Temperatures are currently in the mid 50s, so we've already climbed a degree or two just with the sunrise uh, about an hour and a half ago. Dew points though also in the mid 50s, so those lower lying areas do have some patchy fog this morning. Doppler track is going to stay quiet compared to this time yesterday. It is just a little cooler outside about a six degree drop in Madison again at 56 61 though in Janesville in the upper 40s towards Black River Falls and Camp Douglas. Since that is so close to our dew points, visibility throughout the area looks okay right now, but some of those lower lying areas or the back roads might see some patchy fog develop. As far as the roads are concerned, thankfully everything downtown still does look clear. Here's a look at the Beltline right at Park Street. No delays on the east or westbound side and no major accidents to report at all throughout southern Wisconsin, though of course we're going to keep a close eye along campus as more folks get on the roads. Things are going to get just a little busier over the next few hours, but right now things do look okay uh, as far as traffic is concerned. Yeah, I bet especially along that Park Street exit, that's when it yes. really gets congested as that's, people make their way in. It's going to get a little busier here soon, but right now if you're uh, one of those folks that like to get down there pretty early, you should be just fine. All right, thank you, Dana. Mm -hmm. Well, Justin, at the Channel 3000 Alert Center, Madison police are looking for a dark colored Lincoln SUV in connection with the shooting overnight. Officers responded to a report of a vehicle being shot at over on East Washington Avenue shortly after midnight. When they arrived, they found a 19 year old man who said his car had been shot at while he was driving down East Wash near Highway 51. Police call it, quote, fortunate that none of the four people inside the 19 year old's car were injured. The suspect's vehicle was last seen driving southbound from East Washington. Officers say the victim says he has no idea why his car was targeted. And Baraboo police are investigating after a single gunshot was fired overnight. Police were called to Lake Street around 1 a.m. And when they got there, they found several people, but believe the suspects had already gotten away. Police say they, the suspects were arguing with people living in the home nearby and that argument led to a gun being fired. Thankfully, though, no one was hurt. Sun Prairie police have launched an active shooter investigation after receiving a call that someone at Sun Prairie High School had a gun. The call came in just before 4 o'clock Friday when school was already out for the day and officers say no gun was found. However, police say the report came from a girl saying she saw two other girls talking in the bathroom about shooting up the school and one of them was holding a handgun. Police officers immediately enacted their active threat protocol and evacuated the school. Staff and students, mainly athletes and those in after school clubs, were sent to the school district office, city hall or a local middle school. During their search and, and as students were being evacuated, we had officers up there, we did not find anybody matching the description uh, that was given uh, by the caller. Uh, we did a, a, an initial search uh, of the school and we did not substantiate an active threat. We did not find a, a weapon. This is still an active investigation until police can figure out whether the information given in the call was credible or not. Officers say this could be legitimate. It could be a hoax. They aren't ruling anything out right now. And the district says this was a good example of the evacuations they prepare for. We're learning more about the likely lawsuit against the city of Madison and Madison police in regards to a controversial arrest this past summer. The family of a boy arrested in June is asking for $2.8 million because they say officers used excessive force and caused permanent damage. This is video of that arrest. Madison Police Chief Mike Goval says the investigation found the officers use of force was quote 
objectionably reasonable. The family, however, doesn't agree. A civil attorney we spoke to says it's still too early to say what will happen next, but did point out some possibilities. Many times cases will never even find their way to the courthouse. They'll be resolved before that. When they are filed, however, and there is a lawsuit, it's often the case that they settle after the lawsuit is filed and before a jury is ever impaneled. We reached out to the family and the city attorney for additional comment, but they both declined. In Washington, House Democrats are taking their next steps in the impeachment process. They sent a subpoena to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo demanding key documents by next week. They also requested to depose five State Department officials mentioned in the whistleblower complaint. This comes just one day after the complaint was released to the public, alleging the president pressured the leader of Ukraine to investigate a political rival. A congressional official says the House Intelligence Committee will hear closed-door testimony from the Intelligence Community's Inspector General next Friday. Nobody mentioned the 2020 election. Nobody talked about what's his name, Joe Biden, uh, precious Joe Biden. You're well, all trying to prop up Joe a little Biden bit longer. No, as, as a presidential, as a political opponent. We have a president who's violated his oath of office, who used the power of his office and your tax dollars to try to persuade a foreign leader to once again interfere in a presidential campaign. A congressional official says the House Intelligence Committee will hear closed-door testimony from the Intelligence Community's Inspector General next Friday. More local news now. We're learning more about how authorities were able to crack the case of two brothers accused of running an illegal vape cartridge operation. 20-year-old Tyler Huffines and 23-year-old Jacob Huffines were in a Kenosha County court Thursday. Detectives say they busted a man selling the cartridges laced with THC oil in Waukesha. That man then turned into a confidential informant and told authorities about the brothers. The brothers' arrest comes after authorities investigated hundreds of cases of severe lung disease linked to vaping, but illnesses have not been tied directly to this case. The Wisconsin Department of Health Services is providing an update on cases of lung disease leaked to vaping in the state. 60 cases were reported in Wisconsin and 14 more are under investigation. Cases were found in 26 counties, including right here in Dane, Dodge, Grant, Green, and Jefferson counties. The majority of patients reported using e-cigs to inhale THC products. 12 people have died around the country, none though in Wisconsin. In Rock County, the city of Beloit says plans to bring a new baseball stadium to downtown are just the latest to set and transform the city. According to a local leader, several river run, riverfront developments, including a new apartment complex and Beloit College's new powerhouse facility, are already redefining the heart of their city. You know, we've been working on these things for years, and it's just so exciting to see some of these things, the, the baseball and the apartments, all of it is just huge for the downtown area. Construction on the Beloit Snappers new stadium could begin as early as next spring. The September surge for the Brewers took a little bit of a hit overnight and the rare loss could be more costly than just one game. Cleanup man Ryan Braun ex exited early with a left calf strain and the team fell 11 to 7 against the Rockies. That means the playoff bound Brew crew remains a game behind St. Louis, which lost to the Cubs overnight for the division lead. And they're two games behind Washington for the top NL wildcard spot with two games to play. The real concern, though, moving forward is Braun, whose availability is in doubt for the next two games, if not longer. First pitch tonight between the Brewers and the Rockies is at 7-10. It is game day, Badger fans, and even after a minor cramping issue against Michigan, nothing is slowing down Wisconsin's running back, Jonathan Taylor, or any of the Badgers. And they're definitely not slowing themselves down either. Part of that is because they're cutting down on pre-snap penalties, and they're taking care of the football with just two turnovers this season. None of those came from Taylor, who had 10 in his first two seasons. Now the Heisman hopeful says he and his teammates are more focused on beating themselves. Before you can even run the ball, you know, you got to make sure it's secure. So that's that's number one uh, priority as any running back. And I don't care what school you're at. 
ball security is number one. So, you know, like I said, shooting yourself in the foot, that's another thing, you know, putting the ball on the ground, making sure you're protecting the ball, making sure you're, you're, you don't have any procedural penalties. Those are things that, you know, you got to make sure are not even a question when you're playing. The back end of the Wisconsin defense will start today without a few players. Safeties Eric Burrell and Reggie Pearson are sitting their first half after getting called for targeting against Michigan. Badgers head coach Paul Chris isn't concerned about mixing the backups into the defense coordinator Jim Leonard's plans. That can be tricky if all of a sudden you've never played and now it's your first snap. So I feel good with them there and, and you know, we're, we're going to be tested and tested differently and, and um, things are going to come up that you can't necessarily plan for, and that's where they've got to trust themselves and trust the plan and, and, uh, and act on it. Kickoff against Northwestern is at 11 this morning. And if you go, you can see another reason why UW-Madison is ranking number one in the nation. We officially have the most powerful t-shirt cannon in college athletics. Seriously, it is a new addition to the athletic department and it can shoot 114 shirts in 10 seconds. That is 11 t-shirts a second. You can try and get your hands on one of those stylish tops shooting out of the cannon at the game against Northwestern. That is again at 11 a.m. If a stage show is more of your thing, you won't want to throw away your shot to see one of the most popular productions to ever hit Madison. The box office just opened up at 8 o'clock, and here is a live look at where things stand right now. The Overture expects the people in the line to have traveled all the way from Iowa, Illinois, Minnesota, and all across our great state to secure a seat. Getting your tickets in person gives you a two-hour head start over online sales. And if you're planning to buy today, come with multiple options. The Overture says there are plenty of seats, but some dates will sell out or will have limited sections for sale. You can buy Hamilton tickets online starting at 10 a.m. It is 8-11 and you are taking a live look over the Capitol where vendors are getting ready for hopefully a very busy day at the farmer's market. Dana will have your full farmer's market forecast just ahead.
Good morning. It's a very fall like Saturday, a little cool outside, but right now we aren't expecting any rain to come through for the rest of the day, even though it is just a little cloudy. Temperature wise, we're still sitting in the mid 50s, 56 in Madison with that breeze coming from the northeast at about 8 miles per hour. We're looking at anywhere from 8 to 15 miles per hour throughout the rest of the day. Doppler track is going to stay nice and quiet. We don't have any new showers moving in. Uh, some good news. We get to enjoy the dry weather, though the cloud coverage is really hanging on for us right now. Those shower chances from yesterday all associated with the cold front that's now sliding to the New England area. High pressure is going to keep us dry today, but our next chance for showers and thunderstorms is brewing at the edge of the plains. It's going to drive northeast tomorrow, bringing the chance for some showers and thunderstorms developing early, early on Sunday. So for the rest of the day, plan on some clouds through the morning, and then we'll get a few pockets of sunshine later this afternoon. Temperatures will stay in the 60s though for our afternoon highs. Shower chances start to develop after midnight. We may have a few isolated thunderstorms mixed in there. And for Sunday, most of the rain will be in the morning, but there will still be a chance for a few showers popping up later in the afternoon and evening. Monday, a slight chance for showers and thunderstorms, but you'll see that line starting to creep further southeast late in the day on Monday. That's going to bring a better chance for rainfall heading into Tuesday and Wednesday. Throughout the next few hours, our temperatures really won't move around too much, only getting into the 60s for our afternoon highs thanks to that northeast breeze. Again, a few pockets of sunshine, but overall more clouds than sun. Those shower chances start to develop after midnight. We may see some heavier rainfall at times with those isolated thunderstorms. Can't roll out the chance to pick up some stronger wind gusts as well. For Sunday afternoon, it'll be a little more mild, closer to 74 afternoon highs, but we're staying cloudy throughout the entire day on Sunday. Now, with rain on Sunday and rain chances coming up for Monday night into Tuesday and Wednesday, our accumulation totals are really going to climb by the middle of the week week, especially along the state line. So we do have alert days in the forecast to start off the work week Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Again, over the next few hours, our temps really aren't going to move around too much. It is just a little cool outside 64 the high today for your Saturday. Sunday will be closer to 70. Monday we hop up to the low 80s with those rain chances staying into Tuesday and Wednesday and then our temps steadily back off towards the end of the week. A little more seasonable by Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and we'll get some sunshine to dry out again for the end of the work week. Although we won't have a lot of sunshine today. It still will be a nice day if you do have any outdoor plans, given that we don't have any rain coming in for your Saturday. Yeah, it's definitely a step up from last Saturday. I was one of those fans sitting out in the rain. It'll oh, be no. nice not to have to deal with that. No, not to deal with that at all. No ponchos needed today. Uh, maybe just a light windbreaker might be a good idea, though. Music to my ears. Thank you, Dana. Mm -hmm. Well, you still have time to get your tickets for the first Taste of Taliesin. That's happening this weekend. The goal is to give you another reason to visit Frank Lloyd Wright's iconic home. It's a new spin on the location's farm to table meals. The event draws on Wright's vision of community with a locally produced meal celebrating the fall season with ingredients exclusively from the Driftless region. The event takes place tomorrow. We have everything you need to know on our website and mobile app. And happening around the state, Oktoberfest is in full swing. And if you haven't had your chance to participate in traditions like polka dancing and lots of beer drinking, you still have time. This weekend, you can take a little road trip over to La Crosse or Appleton for their Oktoberfest celebrations. La Crosse is runs through tomorrow and is one of the largest Oktoberfests outside of Germany. In Appleton, you can enjoy more than 100 food and craft beer booths. That festival ends tonight. If you can't make it out this weekend, Cedarburg is hosting their Oktoberfest next weekend. Time is 8:18, and one of the country's most beloved actors will receive one of Hollywood's greatest honors. Plus, the trailer for the new Breaking Bad movie is out, and there are several new shows and movies to check out this weekend. We will share Will's top three things to watch all ahead in trending news.
Welcome back. Let's take a look at what is trending this morning. Breaking Bad is back. We're getting our first look at El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. The story picks off where the popular series left off in 2013. Walter White's apprentice, Jesse Pinkman, is on the run and has to come to terms with his past. Aaron Paul returns as Pinkman. El Camino hits theaters and Netflix in two weeks on October 11th. I know I will be watching that one. And since you probably won't be streaming that with your kiddos, here's one for them. Disney has released a new trailer for Frozen 2, revealing a bit more of the plot. Queen Elsa and her sister Anna will journey into an enchanted forest to protect their kingdom. Adina Mazel and Kristen Bell return to play the much-beloved sisters. Frozen 2 hits theaters November 22nd. And here's something everyone can get on board with. Tom Hanks will take home the Cecil B. DeMille Award at next year's Golden Globe Awards. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association gives the award to individuals who make incredible impacts on the world of entertainment. He joins the ranks of Jeff Bridges, Oprah Winfrey, Meryl Streep, Morgan Freeman, and Lucille Ball. You can watch the Golden Globes on January 5th. But there is no need to wait. Plenty of good films and shows are out right now, either in theaters or streaming online this weekend. Here's Will Loper's Three Things to Watch. What happened? Oh, electricity flicked off all over the world. New on home video this week is Yesterday. Oh, I believe. When did you write that? I didn't write it. Paul McCartney wrote it. The Beatles. Who? After a man hits his head, he wakes up to discover he is the only one who remembers the Beatles. John, Paul, George and Ringo, the Beatles. Do you genuinely not know who the Beatles are? Genuinely. And I'm in a really, really, really complicated situation. The rest of the movie finds him stealing their music and passing it off as his own. It's going to be the greatest album of all time. I've got two men who claim that the songs are theirs. Yesterday is available to rent or buy everywhere now. Gentlemen, I'm going to be president of the United States. I'm merely stating a fact. I will be president someday. Newly streaming on Netflix this week is the series The Politician. I'm warning you. Do not screw with my dream. Your ambition frightens me. Ben Platt stars as an aspiring politician who must begin his career in the most brutal arena of all, high school. This young lady would like to vote. She can't without a student ID. Otherwise, they'd bust in a bunch of kids from other schools to vote illegally. That's insane. All eight episodes of The Politician are available to stream on Netflix now. Welcome to Shawshank. Finally, this week marks the 25-year anniversary of the Shawshank Redemption. These walls are funny. First you hate them. Enough time passes. You get so you depend on them. Tim Robbins stars as a man convicted of murder who maintains his innocence, but is sent to prison, and despite the harsh conditions, keeps his sense of hope. There are places in the world that aren't made out of stone. There's something inside that they can't get to, that they, they can't touch. It's yours. What are you talking about? Hope. The Shawshank Redemption is available to rent or buy everywhere now. Happy watching. Those are the three things you need to watch. And this is Will Loper for News 3 Now this morning. Lots of great picks from Will right there. And there is much more ahead on News 3 Now. Next, we are running through the morning's top stories, including the latest on the brawnless Brewers after a tough loss overnight, plus a hug 178 days in the making. As family separations at the border continue, we share one heartwarming story of a father and son reunited after nearly six months apart. We'll have it all right here on News 3 Now this morning, Saturday.
Right now it's tailgating season here in Wisconsin, but you don't have to blow your diet while cheering on the Badgers. We have a nutritionist in studio sharing some simple tasty swaps you can make or even buy. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, it's September 28th. I'm Keely Arthur. We'll get a check of your first alert forecast with Dana in just a second. But first, here are three things to know as you start your day. Madison police are looking for a dark colored Lincoln SUV in connection with a shooting near Highway 51 and 151 overnight. Officers say they were sent to a report of a vehicle being shot at on East Washington Avenue shortly after midnight. When they arrived, they found a 19 year old man who said his car had been shot at while he was driving on East Wash near Highway 51. Police call it quote fortunate that none of the four people inside the 19 year olds car were injured. The suspect's vehicle was last seen driving southbound from East Washington. Now officers say the victim has no idea why his car was being targeted. The September surge for the Brewers took a bit of a hit overnight and the rare loss could be more costly than just one game. Cleanup man Ryan Braun exited early with a left calf strain and the team fell 11 to 7 to the Rockies. That means the playoff bound Brew crew remains a game behind St. Louis who lost to the Cubs overnight for the division lead. And they're two games behind Washington for the top NL wildcard spot with two games to play. But the real concern moving forward is Braun, whose availability is in doubt for the next two games, if not longer. First pitch tonight between the Brewers and Rockies is at 7-10. And Madisonians aren't throwing away their shot to see one of the most popular musicals to ever hit our area. Hamilton tickets went on sale at the Overture's box office about 30 minutes ago. And here is a live look at how things are going right now. Getting your tickets in person gives these people a two hour head start over online sales. You can secure your seats on the Overture's website starting at 10 o'clock this morning. A lot of those people were outside earlier and here's meteorologist Dana Fulton. Dana, pretty decent weather for everyone who's planning on being outside today. <laughs> Overall, yes, pretty decent. Thankfully, folks waiting outside don't need the poncho or the umbrella. No shower sliding on through. It's just a little cloudy right now. Temperature wise, we're still holding on to the mid 50s. Not getting a lot of sunshine to help warm us up. About 56 in Madison currently with a breeze from the northeast about eight miles per hour. Currently a mostly cloudy sky with no rain coming through. Our Doppler track is nice and quiet, but temperatures compared to this time yesterday is just a little cooler. About a six degree drop for Madison and five degree drop though for Lone Rock and Mineral Point. That puts us at 55 in Lone Rock and Mineral Point, 51 in Black River Falls, and about 50 in Camp Douglas. So already starting to warm up a little bit in central Wisconsin. Those temperatures falling to the upper 40s for overnight lows. This is close to our dew points right now. Visibility not much of a concern, though those lower lying areas could have some patchy fog this morning. Of course, the big news for the day, football game coming up later on at kickoff. Temperatures should be closer to about 57, so only warming up a degree or two as we get closer to 11 o'clock. It certainly does feel like fall outside the cloud coverage hanging on for early in the morning and then by the afternoon in the fifth quarter we will be in the mid to low 60s for our afternoon highs. A few pockets of sunshine possible, but overall more clouds than sun. That breeze is going to stay pretty consistent from the north northeast anywhere from 8 to 15 miles per hour. So very fall like day, a little cool outside, but overall not too bad, Keely. All right, Dana, thank you so much. The ongoing crisis at the border continues with many children separated from their families at the border suffering from extreme trauma. This morning, we are taking a look at families broken apart at the border that have been reunited. Manuel Bajorquez brings us the story of a father and his three-year-old son, and he shows us how they were separated for 178 days before they reunited last month. We first met Juani Paz Rosa as he traveled to New York to be reunited with his son. He was all smiles. I know I'll be so happy to be with him again, he said. But after 178 days apart, this was three-year-old Michael's reaction. Tears flowed down Michael's face as he reached back, his arms extended for his caseworker, seemingly afraid of the father he hadn't seen in nearly six months the cold, hard reality of family separation. I was so happy to see him, Juani said. 
but it broke my soul when he started to cry and to say that he didn't want his dad. But I got him with me now. Their story began in February. Pass Rosa says he was shot five times in Honduras for refusing to join a gang. He feared Michael was next, so they fled. You can see them here at the Rio Grande on a crowded raft eight days later to seek asylum in the U.S. The boy's mother stayed behind. But at the McAllen Border Patrol Processing Center, officers accused him of not being the father because his last name was not on Michael's birth certificate. He says CBP told him he'd get his son back if he said he wasn't the father. Confused, he agreed. And Officer Rojuani admitted that he was only using the child to get released from immigration custody. Juani denies saying that. We were separated when he was asleep, he said. They told me I was going back to where he was, but that never happened. And they told me I wasn't going to see him again. It wasn't until July when the DNA test he'd asked for proved beyond a doubt that Juani was Michael's father. ¿Y cómo estás aquí? ¿Todo, todo bien? We met up with Michael and Juani two weeks after their August reunion. To this day, Michael is nervous around most people. He doesn't like to leave the house, you think, because he feels like someone's going to take him away. What's possibly most heartbreaking for me is that this type of situation could have been prevented. Dr. Lonry Falusi works with children who have endured separation. She says the physical and emotional toll on the children can last a lifetime and can lead to depression, anxiety, and PTSD. Some would argue on the other side that it's the fault of the parents for bringing them into the country this way. Put yourself in the shoes of those parents who have come to me and said, we are here because family members were killed by gangs. Paz Rosa says Michael is getting better with each passing day as they await their future. Together at last, their smiles as wide as ever. When you see that smile, what do you think? I'm very happy, he said. It feels great. The two are now waiting for their asylum cases to be processed, but theirs is just one of thousands of cases that are still ongoing. It is tailgating time from burgers and brats to, of course, lots of beer. It can be hard to keep your diet on track this time of year while cheering on the Badgers, Packers and Brewers. Our Christina Laurie talked to nutritionist Emmy Bodden to find some foods that won't blow your diet. With both the Badgers and the Packers taking to the field this time of year, Keeley, you've probably been to your shirt of tailgates. I know I have too. So has Emmy Bodden. She's a registered dietitian and a reliable source of really good nutrition information. So we can still go to the tailgates. Yes. We can eat and it can be good and good for us. Absolutely. I think whether you're going to a tailgate or you're having a party at home, there are so many good foods that are out there for football Sunday or football Saturday. They're not all you know, the most heart healthy or most nutritionally dense, but there's some ways to, you know, jazz up some old favorites or mix mix some new things in with old ones to just get a little bit more nutrition on your Saturday and Sundays. Because a lot of the food out here, it looks like things that you typically see at tailgates. Can yeah. we go through what we have? Yeah, definitely. So we have a snack board here on the left, and this is one of my favorite things, especially if you're um, having a party at home or just want to bring something to a tailgate. Um, we have a lot of colorful vegetables here. We have some fruit, um, some whole grain crackers. So these are, you know, types of carbohydrates that we call comp complex carbohydrates. So they're ones that aren't going to raise your blood sugar up so much and cause that big energy crash afterwards. And we are those the ones that keep you fuller for yeah. longer? Yep, absolutely. So okay. they're higher in fiber, they're higher in protein. So keep you fuller longer, give you that energy to, you know, have a fun tailgate. Okay. Um, we have some lean proteins here too. So again, lower in saturated fat, some heart healthy fats with the salmon, um, and also with the hummus here too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And drink wise. Yes. So I know, you know, drinking is usually part of a tailgate. Um, if it's, you know, an alcoholic drink that you're enjoying, that's one thing, but most people aren't drinking enough water. So if you want to sip on something but aren't in for plain water, I love to recommend, you know, a sparkly, um, unsweetened water. This is one of my very favorites. It okay. just gives you something to sip on while hydrating and it's super tasty. I love the little tagline it. Yep. yep, that's it. Real yep. squeezed yeah. real squeezed fruit. <laughs> yeah, and these ones are really good because they actually do have like a little bit of pulp in them with no artificial sweeteners or no real sweeteners either. So, I like those a lot. Yeah. Yep. Okay.
Chicken? This looks Chicken. delicious. Chicken, yeah. So I love wings, but sometimes wings are, you know, breaded, deep fried, again, just not the um, most uh, healthy or nutritious thing to eat. So I made these in my air fryer, and if you know me, you know I love a good air fryer recipe. So these are just um, little drummettes, and they're in a little rub, just cayenne, paprika, chili powder, garlic, and onion powder, and then that's it, and you just put them in the air fryer and they're good to go, and they're so crispy, flavorful. Um, you don't really even miss the fact that they're not breaded and deep fried. That's great, and also not fried, this cauliflower. Yeah, yeah so this is an alternative to wings. If, you know, if you're on a plant-based diet or just trying to watch how much saturated fat you're eating, um, these are buffalo cauliflower wings, so it's um, just cauliflower florets either in a buffalo sauce or a sriracha and a hot sauce mixture, which is what I did here. Um, and again, just in my air fryer. Yeah, yeah. they're so Cauliflower good. Cauliflower is just so good. Yep. And then finally, you can eat the chips? You can definitely eat the chips. And that's kind of why I like to have a snack board too. So you get your veggies, you get your fruit, and you enjoy your chips too. Okay. Um, some of my favorite dips are gonna be like a nice fresh pico de gallo. Again, you get a lot of color, you're getting fiber, antioxidants, um, and a heart healthy fat like a guac. You can't go wrong with a guac, so one of my favorite things. No, you can have a little fiesta at your tail yeah. too. Thank you so much for <laughs> yeah, talking to us so this much. morning. Yeah. Thanks for coming back, and I'll send it back to you, Keely. Thank you, Christina. Well, looking for something to do this weekend, we have got you covered from a fall-themed fest to a popular band and side-splitting comedian. There's fun events for the whole family across Madison. Your weekend 608 is next on News 3 Now this morning, Saturday. Welcome back. It's the weekend in the 608, and here's a look at what's going on in our area. 
The Fall Harvest Festival is happening all day long at the Madison Children's Museum. It's a fun event for the whole family, including seasonal activities from decorating gourds to cooking seasonal foods. The Suzuki Strings of Madison will also perform at 1 p.m. over at the museum. And there's even more music in Madison this weekend. Toto, the progressive rock band whose 1980s hits, including Rosanna and Africa, started its 40th anniversary tour last year. This weekend, the band is finally making its way over to the Orpheum Theater tomorrow night. The band has sold more than 40 million copies of its 14 albums, so if you're up for a little sing-along, go see Toto on Sunday. If you'd rather laugh, Check out comedian Ismo Likola at the Barrymore Theater tonight. In his homeland of Finland, Likola wrote and starred in his own sitcom titled Ismo. Since making his way to America in 2014, his English as a second language comedy and foreigner abroad shtick has charmed audiences, even earning him the title of funniest person in the world at the Laugh Factory in Hollywood. And maybe he is. You can find out by seeing Ismo at the Barrymore tonight. And if you're looking to get a workout in this weekend, you can do so and help a good cause while you're at it. The fourth annual Paint the Town Yellow 5K is today at NAMI Rock County in Janesville. Organizers say they don't want anyone to be alone in their fight against suicide. Registration starts at 8.30 and the run walk kicks off an hour later at 9.30. It costs 30 bucks for adults, 10 for children ages 6 to 12. The emotional closing ceremony is scheduled to start around 11. And as always, remember to get this month's Madison Magazine for all the best the Madison area has to offer. 845, you're taking a live look over the Capitol right now. Dana has your full forecast next on News 3 this morning Saturday. Stay with us. But first, let's take a look at who is three today. Happy birthday to Leighton and Egypt.
Good morning. It's still just a little cloudy outside. Temperatures are holding on to the mid 50s. We've warmed up just a degree or two since sunrise, though. Really not seeing a lot of sunshine right now. Again, still mostly cloudy. Our breeze from the northeast at about eight miles per hour. These clouds, though, aren't bringing any rain. That's the good news. Our Doppler track is going to stay pretty dry through the rest of the day. It's not until well after midnight that our next chance for showers will arrive. That cold front that brought our showers yesterday now moving to the east, bringing some heavier rainfall to parts of central Illinois and Indiana. High pressure is going to keep us fairly dry today. Uh, that breeze coming from the northeast, though, is going to keep things a little below average with our temperatures. This next system will pass northeast late tonight heading into Sunday. That's when our shower chances pick back up again and into the start of next week. So we do have some more rain chances coming through. Unfortunately, we don't stay dry for too long today. A cloudy sky through the morning with some sunshine coming through later on. Temps will stay below average. It's not until after midnight that the shower chances really pick on up. We will have a few thunderstorms popping into uh, early Sunday morning in the afternoon. There will be a chance for showers and storms, but most of the Sunday rain fall comes through early in the day. Otherwise, a mostly cloudy sky for Sunday. Monday, we're also looking at a pretty cloudy sky. It's going to be a little warmer outside on Monday, though, with the breeze coming from the south. Chance for showers, a slight chance early in the day, but then that chance really developing later as this line passes southeast. We'll have some thunderstorms Monday night heading into Tuesday, and then a little more rain expected for Tuesday and Wednesday. Temperatures only get to the mid 60s for afternoon highs, so we should be in the upper 60s for afternoon highs right now. It's just a little below average. Shower chances developing for early Sunday morning. If you have to head anywhere early, you'll be dealing with the rain later in the day, mostly cloudy with maybe a few showers lingering, but not expecting much rain later on Sunday. And then again, that rain chance picks back up heading into Tuesday and Wednesday. Accumulation totals by the middle of the week could be hovering over three inches, especially along the state line with lesser amounts expected further to the north. Because of that concern for some isolated flooding, we do have alert days in the forecast for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. We could have some heavy rain rainfall at times with uh, rapidly accumulating totals there anywhere from an inch to two inches possible for Tuesday and Wednesday. So we'll be keeping a close eye on those areas that are a little more prone to flooding heading into next week. Today, though, no threat for any showers coming on through. Temperatures will be just a little cooler, but a very fall like day in the mid 60s for afternoon highs. Sunday will be closer to 70 with those shower chances mainly early in the morning but not ruling out a chance coming through later on in the day. Alert days in the forecast for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Notice Monday quite a bit warmer. We get another 80 degree day and the temperatures back back off into the mid 60s by Wednesday and down into the 50s by Thursday and Friday. So as long as you have a light windbreaker on, I think today's going to be a pretty nice fall day. Dana, we both know I'm not a meteorologist, but, <laughs> but I suspect that Monday is probably one of the last 80 degree days. We're I, for a while. I'm not a betting woman, but that might be a good idea to put your money on that one. Uh, 81's kind of popping up there a little high for this time of year, yeah. and we probably won't see 81 for a long time. All right, well, I will be outside on Monday. Thank you so much. <laughs> We've been asking you to share your morning with us and check out this gorgeous photo from Jim Bradley sent in from Highland. Thanks for sharing, Jim. And what does your morning look like? You can take a picture and post it on the Channel 3000 Facebook page or on Twitter using the hashtag MyNews3Morning. We'll share our favorites right here on News 3 this morning. 8.53, stick with News 3 all day long. And then tomorrow morning, we're celebrating Eat Local Month with a Madison staple, Willie Street Co-op. Some of the best buys for people on any budget. They'll showcase it all. But first, tricky treats. It's officially fall and time to crack open a bag of candy. What are the best and worst seasonal treats? We'll tell you about the new official ranking out this morning when we're back.
Finally this morning, it is officially fall and we are going all in. And a new ranking is looking at the best and the worst Halloween candy. CandyStore.com surveyed more than 30,000 people and took the results from 12 other lists to create what they're calling the definitive ranking of the best and worst candies that you might be sneaking out from your kids' candy bags. The worst candy corn which I find offensive because I really like candy corn. And that is followed by circus peanuts, peanut butter kisses, and wax Coke bottles. The best candy you can get, the website ranks Reese's peanut butter cups. That's followed by Snickers, Twix, Kit Kats, and M&M's. And Dana, you have better taste than me because you love... I love Reese's. <laughs> we were just talking about this. I, I, I'm, I love salads. I love eating healthy, but I'm never going to turn down a Reese's. You so always have to indulge yes. a little bit. Yes. And you said you bought the pumpkin-shaped ones. The pumpkin-shaped ones. And, and you open up, they don't really look like pumpkins, but they are full of peanut butter, and that's what I'm here for. So it was and perfect. definitely <laughs> feeling like fall weather Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes. Perfect pumpkin-picking weather. Real pumpkins, not Reese's pumpkins. <laughs> uh, we're looking at temperatures in the mid 60s right now mostly cloudy we'll get a few spots of sunshine later on overall a really fall day tomorrow showers and thunderstorms build back in and isolated flooding threats into the start of next week that's why those alert days are in the forecast for monday tuesday and wednesday all right looking pretty good you can join dana and i tomorrow starting at 6 30 have a great day